Good morning and welcome to another edition of Coffee with Tom and Joanne. I'm Tom Matthews. And I'm Joanne Toronto. This morning we wanted to talk about radon gas. Not a lot of people know about radon gas, but according to the CDC, I want to read you the little definition. Radon is an odorless, invisible, radioactive gas naturally released from the rocks, soil, and water. Radon can get into homes and buildings through small cracks or holes and build up in the air. Over time, breathing in high levels of radon can cause lung cancer. So how does this tie into a real estate transaction, Tom? So probably in the last 20 years, uh, home inspectors have started testing for radon gas and recommended to buyers to test for radon gas. Because what we have found is that as homes are becoming more energy efficient, um, more radon is getting trapped in homes. Because what happened is in old style homes, for the most part, you had these field stone foundations that were great at holding homes up, but they were very porous. Mm -hmm. So radon would come in one hole and go out the other hole. But in more modern construction, you are seeing homes with poured concrete foundations Okay. You are seeing isonine insulation, which is closed cell insulation that's being put around the sills and, and on the boards. And that insulation is going up through the walls and really making homes super energy efficient. But that you're trapping heat, which is a gas. You're also trapping radon, which is a gas. <laughs> and, and so what we have found is that actually, particularly here in Massachusetts, we 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 border the granite state and granite is one of the rocks that when it breaks down and decomposes, releases um, radon, which is that carcinogenic gas. And, and so what we're finding is that with our new construction homes, oftentimes seven out of 10 homes can have elevated radon. Now the EPA in coordination with the CDC have set a level of 4.0. I'm not a scientist. I don't know what that goes into. I just it know- It per liter. Oh, there we go, Joanne, the detail <laughs> member of the team. You know, so 4.0, that's the magic number that we want to test for. The test parameters, they put out either a machine or two vials that have uh, activated charcoal in them, and they stay out for 48 hours, and they measure the level of radon that's present in a home. If the level is below 4.0, the recommendation is to do nothing although you can mitigate if you want. And if the level's above 4.0, you can do radon mitigation. So Joanne, what is radon mitigation? What does that look like? So one of the nice things about radon is that it's <laughs> pretty easy to correct a radon issue in a house. So uh, there are a bunch of companies around our area. And generally speaking, a radon uh, mitigation system is installed as a PVC pipe that is put under, it, it, you drill a hole through the slab on the floor of your basement to get underneath, to get to the air pocket underneath the house. And it's basically like a little vacuum. And all it does is draw the gases from underneath the house and it goes up through a PVC tube that is then, it can, in new construction, they're put inside the walls during the time of construction. But if you are retrofitting into an older house, for example, my house has a radon uh, mitigation system. You put the pipe, it's about a four inch PVC pipe. It goes into the floor in the basement and then it runs out to your sill and up the side of your house over your roof line. And it's a very simplistic system that includes PVC pipe and a fan. Yep. And the fan is, draw, is creating that suction to draw the gases out from underneath your foundation and put them out over the roof line because radon is naturally occur occurring. So it's right. not, it, it's, it's not that there's something wrong with the piece of real estate and it, and you could have high radon in your house and your next door neighbor does not. Right. Uh, so it's, an, it's, an, it's, it's easily mitigated. Um, it definitely is a health concern, especially now because we have these really well insulated air sealed homes when you have homes that have the dilution effect of transient air coming in and out of a fieldstone foundation or an or an uninsulated home, you tend to not find those higher levels of radon. But it is fairly easy to test for them. Like we mentioned, it's a 48 hour test. And then you could 
uh, you get the results. And if it's over 4.0 picocuries per liter, you can then opt to uh, have the system mitigated. So I also, Joanne, just want to bring up just to make sure that we cover radon in a complete fashion is radon in water. Because if we're talking to a consumer that is buying a property that's on a well, you know, if you end up finding that you have elevated radon levels in the air, you may want to go ahead and test for radon in the water. So radon in the water, it's interesting because if you're, again, in a bedrocked area, you may see that you have radon in your water. So you can drink radon in the water. That doesn't bother you. Where it becomes an issue is when you're showering mm -hmm. because the water is hitting you. And as that water hits your body and as it's coming out of the faucet, the radon is then being released into the air. Mm, right. And, and that's why it's something you want to be mindful of because if you do have radon, high elevated levels of radon in the water, that can be actually really dangerous because then that water is hitting you and that radon is right in your face. Mm -hmm. So if you have an elevated radon in your water, there are radon mitigation systems for wells and okay. for water systems. This really applies to wells because if you have elevated radon in the air, but you have town water, that water is being piped in. So you don't right. have that same concern. Right. And, and, and one may not mean the other. So right. It's, right. If, you have, if you are purchasing a home that has a well, that has high levels of radon in the air in the in the lower level, then what you do is you can still test. I mean, we recommend testing well water either way, right. but it doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be radon in the well right. water. It could right. be, but it yeah. doesn't. There's not a direct correlation between the two. So with radon, pretty straightforward of how to get rid of it if it yes. is in the house. Pretty common to see these in homes um, across New England, but specifically in our area of Eastern Massachusetts, very common to see them. And as long as they are working, they are generally effective. Yeah, and they're a great system. Another thing else for people to know about radon. So say you had radon in your basement that was 5.0 and you decide to mitigate it and you get it down to 2.0. And now 2.0, you're below four. One thing I want people to be mindful of is that every elevation that you go up from the lower level radon naturally gets cut in half. So if you're mitigating that radon to 2.0 and say you have an unfinished basement that you only go to for laundry, your, your exposure is very limited. But then on the first level, that radon level is 1.0. And then by the bedroom level, it's 0.5. And, and because you have more airflow, you have it moving. But I want people just to understand because we've had clients say to us, I won't buy a house that has elevated radon. And we say, that's fine. But you're going to run into it. And then they say to us, but we want only new construction. And, and we say to them, well, be mindful that new construction has so much energy efficiency and air sealing that those may not be like separatable. And yeah. you may have to decide whether you could be comfortable with that or looking at different style homes or different age homes. So just another nuance. It's just something that we want to educate people on for both buyers and sellers. And, um, you know, and anything else to add, Joanne? No, I just think that there's, right. there, you test for it, you can mitigate it, yep. and it's a pretty crisp and clean thing that can be um, overcome in a transaction. Yeah. So thank you again for watching Coffee with Tom and Joanne. I'm Tom Matthews. And I'm Joanne Toronto. Cheers. <laughs>